welcome my dear grade 9 elite students to my channel mathematics made easy this is miss ruchika welcoming you to today's math revision session especially for grade 9 elite for your coming math term 3 exam in this video we are covering from part 2 exam coverage learning objective 13 where you apply the multiplication rule to situations involving independent events so let's get started with the video and if you are liking my videos, make sure you like, share and subscribe to the channel and share this video with many friends of yours who are also going to give the exam for coming term 3, grade 9 elite on 12th of June. So before we solve the questions uh, on independent events using multiplication rule today, let me quickly revise for you a little bit about independent events. So two events in terms of probability are said to be independent events if the probability of happening one event does not affect the probability of uh, happening of the other event. So if we have two events, say event A and event B, and we know that these are independent events, uh, that means their probability is not affecting uh, probability of each other, then we can solve um, uh, this kind of a question which is on independent events using the multiplication rule. So what is this multiplication rule? Uh, multiplication rule states that if you have to find the probability of uh, two independent events then you can calculate the probability of uh, one event and multiply it with the probability of the other event. So I may write it as probability of A intersection B is going to be probability of A multiplied with probability of B. So uh, if two independent events uh, are given to you in the question, then you can find their common probability by multiplying their individual probabilities. That is called multiplication rule. So now that we know this rule, let's apply it to solve the question. Learning objective 13 is given in your math book on page 401 and we are solving here questions 1 to 5 as you see on the slide. So uh, let us do uh, question 2 first. So Phyllis drops a penny in the pond and then she drops a nickel in the pond. What is the probability that both coins land with tails showing? So there are two different coins that uh, Phyllis has. One is a penny another is a nickel. Now she throws uh, these uh, coins into the pond one by one. Now are these independent events? I want you to think about it. Definitely you are correct. Uh, the probability of uh, you know tails coming in the first penny and the probability of tails coming in the nickel. These are two separate coins. So they are not at all connected. They are not at all related. So the probability is going to be um, independent of each other. So happening or not happening of the events will not affect each other. Therefore, these are two independent events. So we can calculate the probability that both coins will come up with tails by using the multiplication rule. And uh, you see that in the learning objective also. So what is the probability of tail coming in the first coin? Definitely it is 1 by 2. And tail coming in the second coin, that is again 1 by 2. So just multiply them to get your answer. So the correct answer for this question is going to be 1 by 4. Okay, and remember uh, the coin has two sides, head and tail. So the probability of tail coming is half always. Okay, let's do question 3. A die is rolled and a penny is flipped. Find the probability of rolling a 2 and landing on a tail. So two things are there, two separate things. One uh, event is that the die is rolled. Second, the penny is flipped. Penny is like, you know, coin. So now these two are independent of each other because the die has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those six options that can come and the coin, uh, you know, getting flipped. Both are not at all connected. So they both are independent events. So you can calculate the probability of rolling a 2 and landing on a tail by multiplying the individual probability. So think about what is the probability of rolling a 2. So in a die, there are 6 outcomes. 
and coming uh, two out option uh, two number on the die is only one option out of six so this is going to be the first probability and then you multiply it with the probability of getting a tail so tail as i told you in the last question the probability is one by two so just multiply apply the multiplication rule and the answer that you're going to get here is 1 by 12. In a similar way, if you solve question 1, your answer is going to be 1 by 3 because we are using multiplication rule for independent events. Let's quickly finish 4 and 5 also. So in question 4, a bag has 3 red, 2 green and 4 blue marbles. So let's draw a rough figure so that it's easy for us. So 3 red, 2 green and 4 blue. So if we just add them all, we get into the total number of marbles. So they are going to be 9. Uh, here R denotes red, G denotes green marble, B denotes blue marble and T denotes the total. So a marble is randomly drawn from the bank and replaced. So when the marble is replaced, it means the probability will not get affected. Always remember with the replacement, question is going to always give you independent events okay so then after you put that back a second marble is chosen find the probability that both marbles are blue so let's uh, think about whether these are independent events or not so definitely as i told you when there is replacement happening the probability is not going to get affected so this is going to be independent event so what is the probability that first time you get a blue how many blues are there there are four blues uh, in all out of a total of nine so that means four over nine is the probability for getting a blue marble and then uh, even if one blue has come you put it back you replace uh, before the second marble is drawn so again the total number of marble is going to be four and uh, the total marbles are nine so four blue out of nine multiply four with four 16 nine with nine 81 so the answer is going to be 16 over 81 last question most easy a uh, 40% chance that it's going to rain on Tuesday and 60% chance it's going to rain on Wednesday. So uh, raining on two different days, definitely it is going to be independent. There's no connection. So if these probabilities are independent, which is quite obvious, what is the chance that it will rain on both days? So again, we will use the multiplication rule as you have understood by now. So we are going to multiply the two numbers that is 40% multiplied with 60% that's going to give you the answer so you can convert it to fraction so this is going to be 40 multi, uh, 40 divided by 100 multiplied with 60 over 100 simplified by cancelling the zeros so 6 multiplied with 4 is going to give you 24 over 100 so this is like 24% or if you want to just convert it into decimal it is going to be 0.24 so this is how you solve these questions on independent events. So for these questions 1 to 5 on learning objective 13, let's have the final answers now. So the final answers are given in pink so that you can check your answers. And we have seen how we are reaching to these answers. So you also know the steps for these questions. The end of today's video, which was specially made for grade 9 elite from part 2, based on independent events and probability. I hope you found the video useful and if you did, give it a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share this video with all your grade 9 elite friends who are going to give the exam on 12th of June. Until then, this is Mr. Chika signing off from today's video, wishing all of you very best for your coming math exam. Bye-bye.